All right, so let's see if you know enough algebra to solve this equation. So we have a to the fourth minus three a squared minus four is equal to zero, and we're trying to solve this equation for a. Now here is a little bit of a hint. We are dealing with a fourth degree polynomial equation, and we're trying to solve this equation for a. All right, now feel free to use a calculator, but uh, if you have an answer, go ahead and put that into the comment section. I'll share the correct answer in just one second. Then, of course, I'm going to solve this problem step by step. Okay, so a to the fourth minus 3a squared minus 4 is equal to 0. Again, this is a fourth degree polynomial equation. What is a equal to? Well, the correct answer is the following. So there's actually four solutions. So a is equal to plus or minus 2 and plus or minus i. Okay, so if you got this right, well, you definitely get a happy face and an A+. Plus. And if you're like, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I totally forgot how to do a problem like this. Can you help me out? Well, I definitely can. So the first step in solving any equation in algebra is to identify what type of equation you are dealing with. Now, as I indicated in the beginning of this video, we have a polynomial equation. And not only that, we have a fourth degree polynomial equation. So the degree of a polynomial is its highest power. So in this case, that is 4. Now, some of you might be saying, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I forgot what a polynomial is. Well, this is not that difficult. So remember, in algebra, you can uh, couple things together that are called terms. So these things right here are called terms, and they can have variables, and these variables can have powers. And the thing that you really have to pay attention to is that the exponents on these powers can only be 0, 1, 2. In other words, positive integers or 0. It can, uh, you cannot have a negative exponent or a fraction. So for example, something, and by the way, too, before I give you an example, the coefficient of these uh, terms can be any real number. So you can have like 5x to the seventh. This is a polynomial because you have a positive 7 here, which is an integer. But if you had a negative 7, 5 to the x to the negative seventh power, this is not a polynomial. So you cannot have any uh, uh, decimals, fractions as exponents. So again, this is what a polynomial is. Now, it's really important that we uh, know that this is a polynomial because uh, this is going to give us a big clue on uh, how to solve this uh, problem. Now, what I mean by that is that anytime you have a polynomial equation, you need to think of the fundamental theorem of algebra. And that states that the, uh, the degree, which is the highest power of the polynomial, in this case, that's four, that's how many solutions this equation is going to have. All right, so right off the bat, we know we have four solutions to this equation. And those solutions can be any combination of uh, real numbers and complex or imaginary numbers. Now, we saw the answer here. We have two real number uh, solutions and two uh, complex and uh, imaginary number solutions. So that's the first thing that you need to do is to say, hey, what type of equation do I have? And if you have a polynomial, polynomial equation, you need to think of the fundamental theorem of algebra and already know in advance that, hey, we need to find four solutions to this equation. All right, so let's go ahead and get into the actual mechanics to solve this problem. Okay, so there's different uh, approaches to solve this problem. I am going to use factoring. So you always want to uh, try to factor any polynomial. It's always the easiest way uh, to solve, generally speaking. Now, if you take a look at this uh, problem, it's a trinomial. Now, it looks very similar, similar to something like this. Now, here we have a quadratic trinomial. Now, of course, these are not the same, but uh, they look very similar. Now, a squared minus 3a minus 4, we can factor this into a minus 4 times a plus 1. So we can kind of use this pattern to factor this uh, trinomial right here. And we're going to use uh, a little trick here called substitution or factoring by substitution. So let's go ahead and take a look at that right now. Okay, so a to the fourth minus 3a squared minus 4 is equal to 0. So what we want to do here is think of this term, a to the fourth, uh, this way, a squared squared, because a squared squared is a to the fourth. Uh, but the great thing about this is now we have an a squared here. We have something being squared minus 3 times a squared, which is just 3 times this thing, 
minus 4. And this is basically the pattern of this quadratic trinomial. So if we can kind of think in terms of uh, this thing factors into these uh, two binomials, well, we can kind of use that strategy to factor this fourth degree polynomial. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to let x equal to a squared. So we're going to uh, just substitute in an x for these a, for these a squareds. And uh, when we do that, we're going to end up with this right here. OK, so now we have x squared is uh, x squared minus 3x minus 4. We can easily factor this quadratic trinomial into x minus 4 times x plus one, uh, x plus 1, excuse me. But uh, re uh, remember that x is equal to a squared, so we can kind of plug uh, a squared back in after we factor this uh, for x. So now we have um, a squared minus 4 times a squared plus 1 is equal to 0. All right, so I know uh, that uh, this is a lot, but this is a great little trick uh, to remember. Uh, again, factoring by substitution, because if you can factor a polynomial equation, it's very easy to uh, solve it. OK, so again, now we're down to a squared minus 4 times a squared plus 1 is equal to 0. Now we're going to work on solving the rest of the equation in just one second. Now, before we continue on, make sure to hit that subscribe button. This really does help my channel grow on YouTube. Also, make sure to check out my full library of math courses. Now, in every single one of my courses, I give you a full comprehensive detail lesson on every single topic. Also, I cover thousands of problems with full video solutions. I have a ton of worksheets, online quizzes so you can get ready for tests, and even printable and downloadable notes so you can study offline. All right, so if you want a great, clear, and understandable way to learn math, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. All right, now before we finish up this problem, let's just do a quick review. So the first thing is, is that we are dealing with a polynomial equation, and uh, we're looking for the number of solutions that is equal to the degree or highest power of the polynomial. Again, that is called the fundamental theorem of algebra, or at least that uh, concept. Now, the second thing is that you always want to try to factor a polynomial. And sometimes this is uh, pretty challenging, but to remember, you can use little tricks like substitution method, you know, basically the technique that I use to factor this fourth degree trinomial into these two binomials right here. Okay, so now the rest of the problem is going to be very easy. So this thing, a squared minus 4 times a squared plus 1, is equal to 0. So we can use the zero product property to solve this equation. Now, let's just think about this for a second. We have this thing times this thing, and the answer is 0. So if I said to you, hey, I have two numbers, and uh, when we uh, multiply them, the answer is 0, what does that tell you about these numbers? Well, it means that one or both of those numbers has to be 0. You can't multiply two things together and get 0 without one or both of those uh, factors being 0. All right, so that's called the zero product property. And uh, to solve this equation, all we have to do is set each factor equal to 0 because one of these or both of these has to be 0. All right, so now the algebra becomes uh, super easy. Let's go ahead and start over here. So a squared minus 4 is equal to 0. All we have to do is move the 4 to the other side. We have a squared is equal to 4. Now, uh, to solve this uh, lovely quadratic equation, all we have to do is take the square root of both sides. So a is equal to positive and negative uh, 2. So remember, we have a quadratic equation. We're looking for two solutions. So our two solutions here, two real number uh, solutions, is uh, positive and negative 2. Now, remember, we have a fourth degree polynomial. So we're looking for four answers. And we already have two. And these are two real solutions. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at this other factor. So a squared plus 1 is equal to 0. We move that uh, 1 to the other side. a squared is equal to neg negative 1. Now we're going to take the square root of both sides. So a is going to be equal to the square root of negative 1. And by definition, we're going to have a positive negative square root of negative 1. So by definition, this is what we call an imaginary number, or i. All right, so again, we have two uh, solutions over here. And these are imaginary or complex number solutions. 
All right, so you definitely need to know how to solve polynomial equations in algebra, especially uh, more advanced uh, mathematics. This is a huge topic, so again, you know, uh, look to factor a polynomial if possible, but uh, there's other techniques as well. Okay, so I hope this video helped you out, and if that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. Now, if you need additional help in advanced math, check out these courses right here. So these courses, Algebra 2 and College Algebra, these are effectively the same level of mathematics. So whether you take my Algebra 2 or College Algebra uh, course, you're going to get the same material. Now, if you are further along in math and you need to study like advanced trigonometry and other topics, then check out my pre-calculus course. All right, so I'm going to leave uh, links to all these courses in the description of this video. And with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.